What's up guys, it's Ollie here. A quick vid today in regards to swapping out my Bluetooth and MOLF 2 module on my E61 BMW Touring. Uh, it's a 2008 model and ever since I've purchased the vehicle, I've had no Bluetooth functionality whatsoever. Uh, the voice control doesn't work, phone call, phone book, you know, all the, all the stuff. Um, and I just thought I'd show you guys how to replace that module, where it is, what causes the issues and the, the fix basically there. So let's get into it and I'll show you what issues I've been having in the vehicle. Now, the main issue I was having was the Bluetooth here, as you can see, it says pair and new telephone. Now, originally, all I had was this menu here. This just said pair telephone. That was it. Now, when you click pair telephone and start pairing, you would get to this menu and then you would search on your phone. It doesn't matter what phone I was using, it wouldn't find the system at all. Just wouldn't pair and essentially nothing would work. I also noticed a strange issue. This one is the voice control. Now, when I clicked it, it actually froze my CCC mask unit completely. Um, it stopped the radio from working. It was trying to work, but it never works. And you couldn't cancel it or do anything. Um, so I immediately thought, well, there's something wrong there. So obviously now I've already done it. This is after I've replaced the module. And as you can see, it's now working absolutely fine. If I go out of here and back to here, communication. Now, originally that didn't say that. It just basically said, um, it was just blank basically. And now you can obviously see I have full functionality and then dial a number. And as you can see at the bottom here, I've got complete signal and functionality there. So they're the issues I was having. Uh, it might be something similar to you. Let's get to the back of the car and I'll show you how to replace that module. So firstly, I'll disconnect the battery if you can. Just literally lift this up. And unbolt this, I've already done it already. And then pull this out. As you can see. Underneath here. There's the battery there, just take the terminals off. Once done, you can then come to the back here and, and crack on. Under here, if you look at the back here, you'll see that there's two holes. Now I've already pulled out the clips just to show you that they'll need to be popped out. And then if you lift this tray up, out, you'll see at the back of the, the vehicle, in the trunk, boot, whatever you want to call it, there is the module in question. Now let's just pop in here. Now you'll see here, oh. now you'll see here, these are the connections. Now this is your fiber optic, this is your main harness, and there's your aerial at the back there. All you need to do is unscrew these little bolts at the back there and down there. And this whole system will come up and then you can pull it straight out. And simply all, I'm not gonna do it because I've already done it. But this is a new unit that's already been installed, but I'll show you sort of why that happens. And, um, and yeah, sort of um, show you how to take it apart and have a look. My case was actually in pristine condition. Um, but yeah, it's very easy to get water inside. Uh, all you need to do to take it out is flip the unit upside down, take out these screws here, so over there and at the back there, and then we'll have a little look. Now, once you've taken the screws out or loosened them up, just simply just pry all around. Uh, they're quite tight. This is not necessary, by the way. This is just me being curious. 
You don't need to if if you know if the if the fix works, you don't really need to go prodding around in your old unit. But I just want to sort of show you why it fails. And there you go. So just take that off. Lift the board out. It's quite tricky with one hand. I'm holding my phone here. I'll just point out here, as you can see, this is completely corroded. If it looks like this, um, if you check it and it looks like this, it's probably most likely this. And now, I, now I've checked my board over and to the naked eye, it looks absolutely fine. Um, just trying to spot where I found a bit of corrosion. Yeah, just up here. So you can see here, now, I haven't checked this board and I'm no electrical expert, but I would assume that for some reason, this has caused the fiber optics to fail. I did notice um, when replacing the board that the, the light from the fiber optics wasn't working on this board when, when the power is plugged in. Um, you'll see that if you take unplug it while it's on, um, disclaimer, um, wouldn't recommend doing that, um, but obviously at your own risk. Uh, you'll see that it's, it shoots a bright light out, which is the fiber optic to the car. Um, so I think, yeah, so as you can see here, it's come, you know, it's had some water ingress at some point, even though my, my actual case, it was pristine. So you never know. Now I've heard on the E60 models due to the position of them, they can get, they do suffer with water ingress a bit more. Um, but in my situation where I'm using my car to do detailing and, you know, the inevitable spills and stuff, I try to keep it at bay. But, you know, this is, this is, so this is situated underneath the actual shelf and the, you know, the, the boot tray. So you can see how water can get down here. Um, but yeah that's really what it looks like and that's probably the cause um and yeah just for your information really there you go guys that's how you replace a bluetooth module on an e61 um, the saloon is a very similar process it's just located to the left behind the sort of the boot carpet um i'm sure there's a thousand guides online how to do that um, i'm sure it, there is for this as well so if you get stuck um, I'm sure there's plenty of more information out there. Um, this is just a straight swap. So if you are looking to upgrade from a, a MOLF 1 module to a MOLF 2, it's what's, which is what's in this vehicle, then um, you may need some coding required. I'm pretty sure you do indeed need to code that in. This is a straight swap. You don't need to change anything or code anything. Um, and all I'd probably advise is I'm pretty sure they're all interchangeable, but I went for a similar build date. I was quite lucky and found the part number with a similar build date. So yeah, I mean, that's it. Uh, any questions, uh, comments, um, any, you know, any sort of um, extra information you can give, pop a comment below, like the video, and um, I'll be back soon with some more. Take it easy guys. Cheers.